don't turn him back. What is the purpose of your visit? Just holiday. In Fisty, London. You've got three months. The landlord cannot know you're here. You can't stay long at all. No. No more of your people. But this is my brother now. He's just like me. He's hard working, trustworthy. You need to start putting something down. Just because I'm, I'm wearing new shoes. What if I was wearing machino? I have no money. Nowhere to sleep. Have you ever heard of human rights? You don't exist. You're invisible. You have no rights. Hi, my name is Brian T. I played um, a great landlord. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joshua. I played Agula. Hello, my name is Yana. I was a cinematographer on the film. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Mani. I played Abby. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tai Ola Ulutaro. I played Papa G. <laughs> My name is Anthony. I played Solo. <laughs> Tony Oyedoga, pastor. <laughs> I played Great Okiki. <laughs> Big screen. I'm just sitting on a on a Mac for the last year and a half, you know, so it's, it's good. Yeah. Can you say a little bit about how the, the film came about? What was the spark of the, the story? Wow. I'll tell you. Yeah, based on how much is it based on? Well, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not me. <laughs> um, it's basically it's um it's 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 different stories I know. It's different people I know. Oh, I know of rather stories you've heard, you know, things you know. I basically wanted to do something that's kind of topical, something which people can relate to, something like you know, like today. And I mean, it's, I mean, I wrote this about three years ago. It's so, not. It was before all this um, current immigration stuff, problems we have now. But, you know, that's it. Can you tell us a bit about um, yeah, the casting of the film and, and how it came together? Right. Um, well, the casting was was particularly very difficult actually because. Um, one thing I wanted in this story was, because the characters are from Africa, I'd, I, I definitely needed authentic characters, so I needed like accents to be right and all that. And first round of casting, we didn't actually get any anyone, you know. So um, I basically had to like basically go further than typical. I put an advert out on um, Hollywood movies, the station, and that's where I got most of these guys. You know? Yeah, so basically we had to do more than like the normal typical casting. Um, it's terrific chemistry between you all. It's really, I think it really, really comes together, particularly like there's such a great comedy and feeling like that. Did, did you do a lot of rehearsal time or was it a really quick shoot? <laughs> you got to do that. <laughs> no, we were, it was, it was, yeah, go on, go on, put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was to be fair, there wasn't any rehearsal time at all. <laughs> um, no, I think we kind of all just turned up and, and it was like, Misha was like, action. Was like, that was it. There was no take one, take two. Yeah, it was really good. But, you know, I really want to thank Misha. You know, he um, really pulled it off. I'm very impressed with it because when we were there, it didn't really look like that, did it, guys? <laughs> um, I actually really impressed with um, everything like everything Mesha did it did I said I wasn't expecting this actually this is like a big <laughs> and um, I'm happy for the part that I acted I, I, I acted as Ukiki as the lead and I'm happy for Abby too <laughs> and also the landlord that was always giving me problems so I, uh, <laughs> mm. how much work could you done before like to do a big lead role, so yeah, I've done other um, movies uh, back in Nigeria, mm -hmm. yeah, but this is actually the first one I'm doing in London, and I'm, I'm happy that I acted it. I'm, I'm proud of the um, outcome. And you're gonna, you, yeah, okay. you gonna stay here then? I'm like well, character. I'll still go back home. Back home. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, come back Hopefully. here. Hopefully, yeah, sure. I'm just happy for everything though. Thank you. My involvement was actually accidental. Um, the casting had been done, but Meshak was looking for somebody to play this character, and they put word out. 
And then a director friend of mine who was a director in Nigeria with whom I had worked on various television series in Nigeria now called me and gave me his phone number. I called him. I gave him a kind of CV, told him a series of TV shows I've done, uh, the films, and then asked me some questions about drama and theatre. And then he said, so you got a part. <laughs> 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 so um, that I now believe that this must be somebody who really knew what he wanted. The casting was quintessential. The script was classic. The comedy was pristine. So I just said, yes, I want to be a part of this, and I'm glad it's all came out well. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm proud to be in the film, The Invisible Man. Um, I've not met that from when he was this high. So, yeah, and he's a really, really talented guy. You know, you need to give him another round of applause. Just to let you know, he's also done um, the soundtrack to the movie as well. Did you sing in one of them? And yeah, and he did sing. You sound like you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, re really, really talented guy. A pleasure to work with, and the rest of the crew as well. You know, it was really fun working with them, and uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. How did you get involved, and what were the particular sort of challenges of the shoot? Um, I didn't know Nasha before the film, and uh, I think we um, established. And some great connection straight away when we met. Uh, and uh, I think it was very easy to work together. We didn't have particular problems, creative problems, uh, especially. Yeah, yeah, it was more fun than anything, to be honest. It was hard uh, because um, uh, we didn't have massive budget, so we obviously couldn't afford a lot of things we would like to afford. Um, um, we would want to have, but nevertheless, managed to achieve quite a good result, I think. I'm quite happy. <laughs> and I would love to carry on working together. What was the budget in the end? Um, it was very, very difficult. It was extremely difficult. Um, I basically had to sell finance in the end. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, basically savings, um, friends, family, you know, the family is just left. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, that, basically, you got, you got, basically, I just thought, look, I tried to raise the funds, I couldn't get it, I just thought, look, I can either go back, you know, or just keep going and just basically use what I have and just see what I can do with it and just cut here and there, you know, just, that was it. You said you didn't get much rehearsal. How, how did you get into that kind of role? It's quite a kind of physically commanding role. You know, like. I know a lot of other people in my real life, so it wasn't hard to get from the experience. <laughs> um, but I just, I know a lot of them, so I just hang out with them and just chilled. And it was like a friend. Yeah, yeah. another side of me. How did you gel? Did you just kind of naturally come together? Because your you're kind of relationship on screen is very good. We tried to hang out as much as we could, uh, turning up to days on, on set, even when you're not filming and stuff, just to kind of show support and stuff. Um, it was it was a great experience because I feel like we did make some good friends. We do talk as well. We message each other whenever we can. We try and meet up as well. But um, with everyone's busy schedules, it's quite difficult. But um, yeah, I feel like it was mostly just hanging out in between takes that kind of made the chemistry real and come across yeah. on screen as I as I'm glad it did a little bit. Is there anything that you want to add about your experience um, doing the film? Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. To be honest, I don't think I was even meant to be in the film. Was I Misha? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Basically what happened was um actually I was quite lucky really. Um basically where I was working, my director has worked with Misha before he mentioned the film, I phoned me shop, waiting for the audition. Basically, he just brought me in. Well, you're just doing my favor, weren't you, really? Yeah. yeah, I wasn't really meant to be in it. But apparently, I walked in, and um, he thought like I was just, I was just a perfect uh, match for Solo. So that's how I got the part, really. I really enjoyed it. Me and Manny, Yannick, had a great time. Pastor, it's been great, I enjoyed it. And about time has come out as well, because we've been waiting about two years. <laughs> 
you shoot it all at once in one go? Um, well, principal was about three weeks, yeah, it was about three weeks, but we had a lot of, um, we had a lot of, yeah, four weeks, yeah, we had a lot of um, extra, I mean, what's the word thing I forgot? Um, we had more to do, like, oh, update, yeah, pick up, so yeah, so yeah, so uh, took a couple of, oh, um, <laughs> I think we probably finished that, uh, yeah, three months after that. First of all, on behalf of the British Library Film Festival, many congratulations for your film. When you heard that Bob selected the film, what was your initial reaction? Well, I was, I mean, I was happy because, I mean, it's my second film. And um, my first film, you guys never selected, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was good. Yeah, so I thought, okay, at least something's happened here. You know what I'm saying? Before, basically, you live in the diaspora, you're bound to know, you're bound to know stories, you're bound to know people who are like illegal immigrants, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know the stories, you know what I mean? You hear them, and it's, so, I, it's, I mean, I don't know personally, like, you know, I think I probably know one person that it really happened to, but everything else is what you hear, you know what I'm saying? And, um, it's, it, you read about it, it's, it's there, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like when I wrote this, it was, immigration wasn't what it is today, the big story is today, the papers and all that, refugees and all that. But in the black community, it's never gone, it's always been there. Because people have always been trying to come over, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's so it's, it's not really like it was close to me, but I know about it, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah, um, as Mishak said, the immigration story resonates with almost all African families. If it's not you, it must have happened to somebody you know, or happened to somebody who knows somebody you know. And so it's a universal story, and it sometimes it's, it's not just fun, as we sometimes depicted in the film. It's almost always tragic, too, but then, um, this is supposed to, I am sure, also be a kind of exposition of the dual nature of emigrating. You either do it right or you do it wrong. And I'm sure some people back home in our various communities would also learn a lesson or two that it is not always rosy abroad, you know, quote unquote abroad, um, most of us have this impression that once you go, you hit it, and then you go back home as uh, the tall dream that Okiki had, but then it's not always the case. And so it's like a reality check also for those who want to come, or also some kind of pointer to reality, like reality check too for those who are here and cannot make way cannot go forward because it's a good performance. Um, most of the backward story have always been successes or success stories. Because sometimes when people go back, they, they realize that there are potentials that they had that they never thought they had. And when they get back home, they you know, put those potentials to use and they become success stories. I'm, there's something I'm, 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 I mean, I've started working on the next one. I've got the screenplay all sorted. This. As soon as this is gonna be, you know, let's finish this one first, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I'm probably starting up, starting that one in early in the new year. But um, yeah. Can I just say it's gonna be Abby part two. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think the reaction is? This is the first. This is the first showing anyway. Hey, there you go. Wow. Showing the whole world. Yeah. It's only the colorist, the DLP, and me. All right. So all else. you guys in the cast haven't actually no seen it. No one else. Oh, I was scared. Oh my god. I was scared. <laughs> For me, I, I made my film to be seen by everyone. That's it. That's about it. Cinemas, TV, whatever. I just want people to see it. That's that's where I come from. So that, that's it really, everywhere, as, as many places as possible. The great thing working with Meshak is he's very trusting. Um, as soon as I went into the audition, I actually went up originally for Okiki. But um, I don't speak Ibo, so <laughs> that wasn't the best fit for me. 
and um, Abby, I felt more drawn to him. I kind of read the script and kind of thought, okay, I'll throw in a couple lines here, a couple lines there, and Meshach seemed really cool with it. So after a while, I kind of ran with it a little bit, and he did have to be like, cut. That, that yeah. <laughs> so he would kind of read it in a little bit, but he did trust me a lot. He, he gave me a lot of freedom to kind of uh, create this character that I kind of saw in my head and bring it to life, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. A lot of directors aren't very trusting, but Meshach was great. And um, yeah, he allowed me to kind of take 50% of the script, 50% of what I wanted to kind of do, and we just meshed it together and created Mr. Abbey. <laughs> Thank you, Meshach. <laughs>